Hey, what's up, class? I just wanted to give you some quick background on the play we're going to start reading together. Remember, this is our first one. And here's kind of what we're reading. The play we're reading is called The Crucible, written by Arthur Miller. There's a couple things you should know about both those, about both the title and the author. One, the definition of a crucible is either a container where things are heated to the point of strengthening them or destroying them. And two, another definition for a crucible is a severe trial leading to the creation of something new if you survive it and are not destroyed by it. So one way to look at high school is it's a crucible. Unfortunately, too many people don't get through it, right? They either elect, they either don't pass the crucible or they are destroyed in the process for that's one way to look at it. Um, another way to look at it is our lives are crucibles. We pass through trials and tribulations that like test us in order to make us stronger if we survive them. A uh, couple things about Arthur Miller. One, this is my favorite piece of trivia. He married Marilyn Monroe. Um, second, also my favorite piece of trivia is he was investigated by the United States government for being a dirty pinko commie who was trying to indoctrinate the citizens into dirty pinko communism and destroy the fabric of America from the inside in the 1950s. Now, he's one of America's most celebrated playwrights, but that crucible that he faced, uh, McCarthy's 1950s uh, House Committee on Un-American, um, the, the, the United States Representatives House Committee of Un-American Activities, HUAC, um, that, that was the thing that really did change American history forever. And this play that we're reading, The Crucible, is his public letter about how messed up the government can be when it adopts theocratic and dialectic ideology. And what I mean by that is he connected something that happened in the founding of America's social contract to something that happened now. And what I posit is something that is still happening now in very obvious, in even more obvious ways in um, at least some, depending on how you look at it. So this play takes place during the Salem witch trials, right? Where, Things that were good were associated with God. Things that were evil were associated with Satan, right? And we all want to be godly warriors fighting Satan. It's really black or white, do or die, this or that. It's what's called dialectic, meaning mutual, two mutually exclusive like things on a continuum. If that means if you, it leads to the kind of thinking where if you're not with us, the godly people, then you are evil. That's the same way the U.S. looked at the communist um, regimes in other parts of the world in the 50s through uh, one would say now, actually. And it's the same thing that if you watched either um, Republican or Democratic National Convention, what you heard was competing definitions of what it means to be in America. And if you're not with us, then you are not American. And if you are not American, then you are bad. Doesn't that sound like if you're with us, you're with God. And if you're not, you're with Satan, right? And I would argue that most of the social issues that are relevant today are, suffer from that reduction, right? To you are either with us or against us. And if you're with us, you're right. If you're not with us, you're wrong. Not just in terms of the argument, but like morally, right? Um, you've heard that in the mask debate. If you are with us, then you care about people's health. And if you are against us, then you are selfish and individualistic. Flip that. If you're with us, then you are for freedom. And if you're against us, then you're a government sheeple who's in, you know, accidentally spreading tyranny and like giving up your rights, you're a sheeple. See what I mean? It's not hard to see an othering, right? Making somebody different than yourself, less human, when you look at basically any relevant social issue in the United States today. And that's why we're reading this book. Because if you don't know, if you haven't seen examples of that, and if you haven't really like looked at how that is baked into America's social contract, then you might miss it next time it happens. And I don't want you to do that. You deserve to see the choices you're being offered and if you want, reject both of them, or at least be able to explain that you're not morally bad, just categorically as a human for some of the things you might believe.